Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Katie, and I'm joined by Bonnie, Leah, and Eden talking about our one cool indigenous gal. Eden already talked about Sashin Littlefeather. Bonnie already told us about Elizabeth Wanamaker Petrova. Petrovich. Petrovich. Pet- there you oh, go. I even practiced. <laughs> Petrovich. <laughs> um, but before we dive back in, let's get to know something random about our gal pals. I want to know, I'm making a combo question. Yes. <laughs> Eden just talked about um, Native Americans in the performing arts. Mm-hmm. So I want to know if you have a favorite depiction of indigenous people in a movie, a TV, or if you have a favorite book or author um, who's either indigenous or writes about indigenous people. Dun, dun, dun. All medias. All medias. All of them. All right, I'll go yeah. first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I've been loving um, uh, Reservation Dogs, which is on FX. And one of the executive producers is Taiki Watiti who is of uh, Marvel fame and also Hunter Winder people. Mm-hmm. And so he could also be one of my favorite indigenous people as well. Um, I loved it when he came on the Oscars and on behalf of the Oscars, thanked the Academy or the Academy thanked the indigenous lands in which they were standing on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, way to be awesomely dickish. <laughs> Cause he's like, I'm sure the Academy would like me to pay homage to. And I'm like, no, they wouldn't, but do it anyway. Cause it's awesome. <laughs> exactly so uh that's my current obsession right now yeah. so i do yeah. want to watch yes. uh reservation dogs yes. i have i've been um binge watching a lot of different things so mm-hmm. i'm gonna add that one to my list it's quick it's they're like uh they're 30 minute episodes they go really really cool. quick there's only two seasons of it and i want a third i want nice. more and more and more nice <laughs> nice nice so um back in the uh early 2000s uh tnt put out a um I guess I made for cable TV uh, miniseries. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back when they still did that sort of thing. Right, exactly. Well, the Golden Globes <laughs> still have a category for it. Well, that's so, true. That's yeah, true. why not? Um, <laughs> Long form programming. Right. <laughs> so, anyway, they, um, TNT uh, uh, showed this miniseries um, called Into the West. Yes. And I loved it. It was, uh, it takes place in the 19th century. Um, I think we start out in the Virginia area oh. and the story follows two families Okay, um, that uh, interconnect at various points. And one of the families is white mm-hmm. and one of the families is indigenous. Oh. And um, the younger versions of characters would be played by younger actors Mm -hmm. and then when they aged you know uh, an older actor would take over Ah. and i remember in the opening credits you'd have the the image of the older you know the picture of of the younger right and then it would morph into the older Mm. version so you knew exactly who was playing right. the, the new version of the same character oh. nice. kind of thing. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Um, the indigenous people spoke their indigenous languages. <gasps> oh, nice. yes. Um, you know, so, so you, you got to hear the languages yeah. and, you know, so there's a, you know, there's subtitles and whatever. I right. have no problem reading a movie. Exactly. I like reading, right. So I'm good with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, it was just, just look, you know, it spends so much time teaching, you know, sh- not just teaching, but showing mm-hmm. you yeah. the lives of, of pioneers, yeah. the lives of indigenous people. Um, I mean, you learn all kinds of stuff oh, nice. that the average person who hadn't, you know, really studied anything about indigenous Americans, mm-hmm. you know, might not know, like Indian schools. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Those horrible residential mm-hmm. schools. Um so anyway, that uh, I remember, um, I found a copy of it at uh-huh. Half Price Books, and Thanks. I Ooh, totally bought it because I'm like, I need this in my life. I know, okay. right? So, yeah. I'm I'll not just allowed see if in it's there. Stre- yeah, I know, right? It's dangerous. I'll see if it's streaming anywhere. 
Yeah. I mean, who knows nowadays? Absolutely. Or like three months, six months from now. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Streaming changes all the time. Right. I think they, they showed like three or four hours each night for a week. Oh my goodness. Or something mm. like that. Right. Yeah. That's nice yeah. though. You get to yeah. tell a longer story. Totally. Take it. Bonnie, what about mm. you? I have a book yes. that I found a few years ago that I really liked. It's called Spider Woman's Web. Oh, yeah. Traditional Native American tales about women's power. Yeah. And it's like a whole bunch of like folklore. Mm -hmm. That's really awesome. But then like after each like story, there's like uh, questions for you to like think about. Oh. Like the character, you know, the main character went through like this kind of trauma. Have you been through that kind of trauma? Oh, like, oh interesting. It like make some, it personal and yeah. So relatable. it was like kind of like a little therapeutic thing, but they like they were really good stories, and oh. some of them were like, oh, that's that's awfully violent. <laughs> oh. I was not expecting that. Oh, let me clutch my no, pearls. like like weird <laughs> weird ones. Like th there's one of like someone wanting to get. Um, they they intentionally kick someone off of a boat for some kind of thing like a like a strength trial or something. Oh, yeah, and they were trying to get back in the boat. And I think they cut off their fingers. And oh, I was like, oh my god! Ah! Like was that not, escalated I was quickly. Like, these are, these are, this is not what I was expecting. Lesson learned. Like, oh, I actually have oh, that book. It's oh, really good. Yes. Hi. I like it. I love Spider it. Spider Woman. Totally. I like but it. I have a painting of um. One of the, the tales of the women, like, um, is like a medicine woman. They're calling mm -hmm. her over from another village, and she's crossing a river. So she takes off a moccasin to cross the river, uh -huh. and, like, all the birds come out. Oh. And then she's, like, crossing another river, and then that's where all the le antelope and buffalo come out. Oh, gotcha. Wow. Like, oh. oh, that's cute. Look at that. It's like a mother myth. Yes. yes. Look at that. Da, 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 da. We've been studying those in class. Sorry. <laughs> Our wonderful mother myths. <laughs> there are, aren't there? They're so amazing. We talked about Tiamat in class, by the way, because oh, you nice. talked about Tiamat yeah. on the podcast. So Mesopotamian <laughs> mother myth. Yes. Such a nurturing mother. <laughs> she formed the galaxy and the Euphrates River with her tears. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> She's lovely. <laughs> but what about you, Katie? Well, I'm so excited um, yes. for book club in November because I'm sharing one of my favorite um, Native American authors. Yay! Her name's Louise Erdrich. Sweet. Have you guys ever read anything by her? No, I'm going to you for will. book club and I'm yes, excited. Yes. yes. Um, she's a fiction writer and the majority of her um, books, the setting is on a reservation. Cool. Cool. So, yeah. Um, the one we're going to read for book club yes. is called The Night Watchman. <gasps> and it's actually like loosely based on her great grandfather's life. Oh, cool. cool. So I'm excited to read it. I have yes. not yet. Um, my personal favorite by her that I have read is called Roundhouse. Oh, okay. So gotcha. Roundhouse by Louise Erdrich. Cool. Super good. Ooh. Really recommend. Nice. Look at that. But, Beautiful. Yes. Um, I'm going to actually start out with a little mystery about my lady. Oh, we get to guess. Yes. Well, I know. Oh. I think some of you already know. Um, but I just want to throw out some facts for her because I okay. think they're just incredible. Okay. So her face is on money. Oh, nice. She's been on a game show. Okay. She's a Google doodle. Oh. She lived until three months before her 100th birthday. She almost made it to 100 by I three, know, months? Right. By three oh. months. Okay, that yes. sucks. Oh, okay. Right. But cool. 100 years. Nice. Almost. Cool. <laughs> Bonnie. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying looks... to think. I was like, oh, I think there's an Indiana lady. But She's I think she Indiana. made it to 100. I think she died like at 102 uh, or something. Oh, done, done, done. Now, I am talking about Mara. Or, oh, I forgot my last facts. It's pretty awesome. Too. Oh, yeah. What's your last one? Um. Her family called her gold. Oh. Nice. Oh, wow. So in her... Not like the golden child, like no. gold. gold. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. There you uh, go. Because her name is Mary Golda Ross. Oh. But I guess they never called her Golda. They just called her gold. Oh, nice. nice. So everybody close to her referred to her as gold. Ooh, pretty. Yep. Um, but she was born in 1908. Gotcha. Um, in Oklahoma, part of the Cherokee Nation. Sweet. Um, she's the first known Native American female engineer. Oh, she's mm. an engineer! She is, cool. and she's the first female engineer in the history of Lockheed. <gasps> oh, like wow. Martin and stuff. Oh, so yeah. she was a rocket scientist? She's or a she was an engineer? Okay, all right, engineer, got it, yeah, yeah. 
aerospace scientist, mm. rocket scientist. Wow. Yes. Um, she was also one of the 40 founding engineers of the renowned and highly secretive Skunk Works project. Ooh. And she was the only woman and only Native American on that project. Wow. Holy crap. Ooh. Look so. at that being the only woman in the room. Yeah. Right. And she worked <laughs> at Lockheed from 1942 until her retirement in 1973. Oh, my goodness. Nice. So she was there for years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of people that would say she would have won a Nobel Peace Prize for her work <laughs> if there wasn't so much of it that was still classified to this day. Oh, oh that's wow. Fair. Yeah, because there's a lot they couldn't talk about, yeah. right? Government mm. contracts. And like to this day? To this day, a lot oh, of wow. her work. Mm. I read an article where this means guy. Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read an article where this um, gentleman from NASA was writing about her and saying that, you know, there's some of her work that he can't even view because it is still classified oh. at Lockheed. Holy cow. Wow. So I Talk think it's going to be years Talk to come done. before we see the full picture of what she yeah. contributed to the science sciences. That's cool, though. And mm. to exploring our galaxy. Yay! So it's pretty incredible. Sweet. Nice. So, oh, I love us, smart people. Tell us a story, oh, Katie. She's incredibly <laughs> smart. Um, and I thought it was very, very interesting that um, she was the second of five children um, and when her parents, uh, when she was of age to go to school, mm -hmm. um, they sent her to attend a school in the Cherokee Nation. Oh, In the okay. capital, Tequila? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so she went to live with her grandparents to attend school. Oh. Um, and I think that's really interesting. And I, I wonder if her parents were just recognizing how the Cherokees were a matriarchal society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like how her education would be treated through um, their school. Versus, versus the patriarchy. What, mm -hmm. what she would have had in the town that they lived in. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So um, she went to school there in primary and secondary. When she was 16, she enrolled at Northeastern State Teachers College. Teacherist college. Teacherist college. I wonder what she was going to become at a hmm. teacherist college. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like there's another fact I have to I have to drop on you though. Okay. <laughs> so where she was going and uh, receiving this education, um, it was also the original site of the famed Cherokee Female Seminary, which was the first women's institution of higher education west of the Mississippi. Oh wow! Oh, wow! So that was part mm. of that Cherokee Nation. Oh my goodness! Um, Cherokee mm. education, A special school cool. for women. Cherokee. Absolutely, and it wasn't Love treated. A matriarchal society. It, it might have been like a separate school, but it wasn't treated differently than right, their right. for yeah. men. Yeah, right. So they were definitely. Um, it was equal equal opportunity for, right. for both sexes to learn and excel. Um, I watched a little bit of a YouTube video about various family members of her talking about her mm -hmm. background and, you know, kind of like who she was and how she became that person. And a lot of them really referenced to her family's um, placing so much value on education. Oh, nice. Wow. So she is actually the um, granddaughter of, uh, the great granddaughter of Cherokee Chief John Ross. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Gotcha. Yep. And so um, he actually led the Cherokee through, um, I want to make sure I say it right, but basically when they were starting to sign over their land, when mm -hmm. they were having to give up. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, leading them through that, which was a very tumultuous time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and after that was a little more settled, he immediately turned to education. And that was his biggest priority was wow. to educate gotcha. um, the people in his tribe. Mm -hmm. And so she always had that as like her foundation is how important education is. Mm -hmm. And cool. so she was definitely encouraged. She went and she got her bachelor's degree. Yay. And um, it was in math. Oh, look at she that. She went to teacher's college, um, but she did her degree in math. Cool. However, she did go on um, to teach and she went to different reservations, even outside of Oklahoma and taught. Nice. Um, she also did statistics for the um, Native American uh, Bureau Oh, okay. The Bureau of Indian, Indian Affairs. Affairs. Yes. Got it. Mm. Bureau of Indian Affairs. I needed a highlighter, didn't I? You're totally good. I got lots of facts I know. Here, I got I got <laughs> highlighters at home that does that. It, oh, you know. It's Gotta okay. get more highlighters okay. up in here. <laughs> <laughs> I have pins. Right. <laughs> um, so while she was helping educate and teach others, she continued to pursue her own education. Cool. Um, and during that time, she got her master's degree um, from a university in Colorado. Okay. So she, in the um, decades and years, this thing, this was like the 90s by then, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit earlier, but she became, she was awarded the... Um, 
alma mater of honor. What is that thing called? I'm not a real college The alma mater of okay. honor. Outstanding alma... Alma nanova. Alma nanova. Alma Outstanding alumni yes. awards. Mm. That's yes. that word. Oh. Alumni. Oh. Alu- yeah. Well, it says alumna. It I does. They're trying to like... They're trying to grill it, it up. Grill it up. <laughs> Well, that's the actual <laughs> word. What do you mean they're trying? Is it? <laughs> alumna is a female graduate. Oh. A singular female. As opposed to alumnus. Right. Which would be a singular male. I didn't know there was a difference. I didn't so know. They, I guess I should have known have... there was a difference because alumni it's Latin. Yeah. Got it. But... Uh. Can't they just make one word? It's too hard <laughs> for us. Latin. It's, it's, Latin. Too, it's too hard Latin. for us yeah. that didn't get master's degrees to, to think about. I know. I know. Uh, they, okay. they totally Greeked it up. <laughs> they did. Some Greek schooling. And it's not even from Bonnie. <laughs> nope. Nope. Not even Bonnie. I'm working on my it. master's and I didn't even know about that. <laughs> you will someday. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she went ahead and got her master's degree while she was teaching. Mm-hmm. Um, and right when she was finishing her master's degree was the start of World War II. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And her dad said to her, yeah. um, go to California, find an engineering form, find somewhere to work, find work because, you know, all the men are leaving. So there's yeah. going to be ah. a Yes, few so there's spots. jobs open. Yeah, there's exactly. Yeah. Open. Um, and so it was with that advice that she packed her stuff up and left for California and oh. got the job at Lockheed. Nice. That's cool. Go west, young man. When except in this particular situation, it's a young woman. Yes. <laughs> right. Love and it. then, you know, uh, sadly, the tale of a lot of women who got jobs during World War II is the men came back and they found themselves out of a job. Right. But by then, Lockheed had realized they have themselves a bona fide genius. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. instead of, like, pushing her aside, she was joining that, you know, the skunk group. And mm-hmm. they were also paying for her to go to classes on astronomy at UCLA. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. So they were investing in her. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, they're investing in her. Yep. She's she's there long term. Yeah. That, that is yeah. awesome. And uh, rare. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. She is incredible. Um, So she, some of her, like, accolades are that she helped um, design the P-38 fighter plane. Okay. Which was huge in World War II. Okay. Mm -hmm. It had a lot of issues because it was, like, the fastest plane we'd ever made. Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah, quick make a plane for war. Oh, no, no, no. It went the fastest. Oh, Oh, God. I'm going to use my hands so you you know it's going fast. Not as in production as in it goes real fast. It goes real fast. (laughs) It went over, like, 400 miles an hour. Oh, wow. Um, So there were a lot of, like, technological problems yeah. with hurling people's bodies that fast in yes. planes. They had to, like, shore them up a you little. Know, and their uteruses might fall out. <laughs> their uteruses might fall out. Definitely. <laughs> oh, my God. The roving uterus. Hilarious. Um, so when we were not so actively and aggressively pursuing a war, she yes. turned her attention to the space race. Yeah. Um, a she, different kind of war. Yeah. <laughs> She worked on rockets. She worked on satellites Ooh. for both um, military and non-military purposes. Okay. Um, she helped write the uh, book, like the kind of manual of what would it look like if we sent a rocket to Mars's orbit. Oh, you cool. Know, that book. I think there was a shorter title, which gotcha. I could tell you if you guys I was going to say a, a shorter title. Generally, aerospace has <laughs> so, longer wrong. titles. Okay. The NASA Planetary Flight Handbook, Volume 3. Volume three. three. About space travel to Mars and Venus. You know, my favorite one was two, but I'll take three. <laughs> <laughs> I believe... Well, I'm still holding out for four. I know, yeah. I know. But I do think volume two was the Empire Strikes Back of all of the <laughs> NASA <laughs> handbook manuals. Fight me if I'm wrong. I have no idea what they are. <laughs> so she was literally... She wrote three, yes. She did. She wrote the handbook. And she was literally uh, doing the math and the calculations to find out how you would get a rocket outside of Earth's atmosphere mm-hmm. while she was still using a uh, the slide rule. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. She girl had, yeah. like, basically an abacus. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how people use this. <laughs> yep. Um, so she also worked on the designs for manned and unmanned Earth ar- orbiting flights. Cool. And satellites. Ooh. Okay. Love Around it. what time period was she doing all of that? Um, so she got hired on, I think, in 1941, 42. Yep. She was okay. hired in 42. Okay. Um, and she worked there until 73. Okay. So it's so prime time space years. race. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
And sometimes the Lockheed California group wasn't always talking to the NASA Florida Houston group. Yes. So, mm. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Things uh, that make you go, hmm. Right. What are they up to over there at Lockheed Private Business? I think it'll be interesting <laughs> just, you know, I don't know how long it'll be until they start unclassifying some right. of her work, but just seeing, you know, the extent yeah. mm-hmm. of yeah. how she she progressed their 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 business. What were I they mean, working on? Yeah, I would think you'd have to be pretty fucking exceptional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in that time period. Oh yeah, to get in to be the only woman in the room. To be the only woman yeah. in the room, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and if you want to see, I'll have you put it in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a clip online of her. I remember at the beginning I said that she was on a game show. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was on um, in 1958, I think it was. Okay. Um, What's My Line? Oh. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Is and that the one where you guess, you guess the person's they... job? job. Okay, uh-huh. okay, okay. Gotcha. Nice. So it is the one where you guess the person's job. Oh. And it's just interesting um, to see how different game shows were back then. Oh, yeah. Because... Um, Gold comes out in an evening gown with gloves on. Mm. Oh, wow. She's very, like, soft-spoken, but obviously super intelligent and seems to have a really good humor about her. She has, like, the sweetest dimples. Uh (laughs) Oh. Uh-huh. Um... And it's just, it's just so fun to watch because they show the audience her her career at the beginning, and mm-hmm. you know it's basically what was it designer of rockets and missiles, <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> and they're like, and well, they it can't be the her. And they have the panel guess, and they actually do eventually guess. Uh-huh. It takes them a long time, but at the end, the host even turns to her and said, "You know, I wasn't expecting this either as a career." Girls can't do this. Oh, oh yeah, like yeah, I said, yeah. I've, I've been reading our uh, book club book for this month about right. Walt Disney and all his memos about we should give girls a chance. Yes, exactly. Mm. But then at the same time, Lassie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gotta give the girls a chance. Right. Yes, exactly. Good old college try. <laughs> so I, and I feel like, you know, she was one of those very like focused person people yes yes um she was always connected to family because in this other little um youtube clip it really talks a lot of family members about how she would always send them cards Mm -hmm. at christmas she would send them dates that she would grow at at her own house in california okay not like a tinder kind of profile but like the like (laughs) the she wasn't like playing cupid like the fruit okay all right gotcha like a christmas date instead of speed and speed and (laughs) dates and dates next we're gonna go minors and minors so she definitely (laughs) was never disconnected from her family but i feel like during those work years like that was her passion her job she talks about being at the office until 11 p.m working on the numbers and all of that so after her retirement in 1973 she actually spent a lot of time um kind of i feel like going back to her roots really embracing her cherokee heritage um because during that period of time she spent a lot of energy and effort encouraging girls and um native americans to get into the sciences and math cool um, and engineering. And seeing the power of what that education can land you as exactly. a career and opportunity. Exactly. Oh, yes. Neat. I keep thinking about, you know, she's in California with Lockheed. And, yeah. of course, there's NASA in Florida and Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then there was also what was going on in Virginia mm-hmm. with the hidden figures. Yes, ladies. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Langley. And I think all of this happening like, on all corners of the, yeah. the Americas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then it's kind of like, okay, did, did this group of, I mean, they're all doing the same thing. Right. So yeah. This group over here talking they know to these about... people over here. And, right. You know, did mm-hmm. the, the, the hidden figures lady know about her and vice versa? They cut, Some of them probably had to, to a certain extent. Because they're all doing this, you know. Yeah. I mean, Their math, names on figures. reports. And yeah. yeah, exactly. Getting your name on a paper was a big deal. Totally. Yeah. Well, they have a bit about her on NASA website and they describe her as a hidden figure. Oh, yeah. Nice. Well, Somebody that definitely that. helps mm-hmm. propel yeah. Yeah. the NASA. NASA program, but of course wasn't getting credit at the right. time for it. Yeah, um, yeah. But yep, yeah, I was trying to look for an organization she was part of, and I'm not finding the names. But it does say that part of what she did after she retired at the age of 65 is she went around to high schools and colleges delivering lectures. Oh, cool. Um, cool. Trying to inspire mm-hmm. younger generations yeah. to get involved in the sciences. I love that. Cool. So, and the other thing she was hugely part of, and by this point, she was 96. Okay. Oh, yes. Goodness. Yes. But, Queen. I mean, of course, this started a few years before that, but she was um, very much involved in 
opening the National Museum of American Indians building at the National Mall in Washington, D.C. Yes. Oh, right. very cool. Yes. Um, so she was hugely advocated for that and helped support that. Yeah. And in fact, she went at the age of 96 um, to the uh, grand opening oh. where all of the different... Um, indigenous nations native american nations came mm-hmm. and they were lined up by tribe oh, from a nice. to z oh and wow marched down the mall oh, together cool. uh, oh nice and so i i got to hear a little story on youtube of um it was the daughter of her second cousin or something <laughs> right but who was close to her she's a storyteller and she's a talker that goes places yeah. um but she was at this march and she said you know they were lining us out alphabetically so if you were like <laughs> mm. apache or cherokee right she said i had to get up at 4 30 to oh, get there and line oh up <laughs> and get ready mm-hmm. um but so we started this march and at one point in the march i turned and looked behind me and i just saw the light hitting these silver curls oh um and it was gold marching at the back of the cherokee nation oh oh wow so, 96 and she had somebody with a golf cart take her one of the staff of the museum oh, nice. so she could march oh so, look at that yep. that's um, adorable totally <laughs> So, and then after her passing at 99 years old. Three months um, before 100. Darrr. Yep. Part of her <laughs> estate, she left $400,000 oh to the National Museum of American Indian. Oh, very nice. cool. Wow. That's awesome. And a she wonderful living legacy. Totally. To kind of like put forward. How awesome. Mm. So did she go by the name Gold or just kind of like I, that they, was her you know, more um, tribal name? I had not family read name. Gold until I watched the YouTube video where her family was talking about her. Right, so okay. I assume it was just her family. Gotcha. In fact, in the the game show, they call her Mary. Okay. So gotcha. I'm sure about work and yeah, stuff. She probably went by like Mary. among the family. Yeah. Gold. Yeah, gold. Gotcha. So. Cool. But I liked that, and I thought, you know what? I watched the whole hour-long documentary by the family. I'm like, I'm going to call her gold, too. Yes, Aww. exactly. I know her now. <laughs> You're like, I'm one bit. of the family. Exactly. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Mary Golda Ross. Aww. American oh. badass. Exactly, <laughs> Absolutely. Right? And we don't even know the full extent to her badassery because yeah, right. it's still under lock and key and, what is it, redacted? You know what yep. I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. And she's got all the flair so we can show in the show notes I, I should help find some of this yeah, stuff yeah i'm yeah. gonna make you do it sweet i but mind her um one dollar commemorative coin oh yeah 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 um then she was on the back side of a sacajawea for a while okay oh, nice. gotcha. um her google doodle she's got sweet. all the things oh that's awesome nice. and yet her i was show. <laughs> still not aware of her at all and mm-hmm. i mean she's got three really simple mm-hmm. names mary gold ross yeah. You mm-hmm. would think that would be easily identifiable and memorable. And it's like, yeah. wait a minute, how did I miss this you can amazing find, lady? Uh, a totally. lot of video clips of her with your man killer. <gasps> yes! Oh, yeah. Uh, the man killer. Yeah. Oh, because they were both Cherokee yep. and they were both mm-hmm. around that same yeah, time exactly. when Wilma was uh was in she office. She came to her um her. her what do you call it? Inauguration. I Oh, oh, okay. Her, gotcha. Yeah. Her oh. ceremony. Her. Oh, there you go. She, she was laid to rest. Gotcha. There you spoke. go. Gotcha. Oh, yay. Oh. I also Good kind of wonder on if she uh, met uh, Nichelle Nichols at all. Oh, helping right. to promote Lady in Science and NASA yep. stuff. It depends on her. how much she was Lockheed or NASA at the time, yeah. probably. But yes. Because yeah. Nichelle well, she was She was always at it. Lockheed. Yes. They just, mm. yeah. They, yeah, they would but, hire, yeah, NASA would hire everything. Lockheed stuff and yeah. trade information. Depends maybe. how warry she was at the time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is true. <laughs> I was talking to Josh about her and he's, uh, you know, very peaceful sort of gentleman. <laughs> he's vegan and stuff. And I was like, she worked at Lock- Lockheed. And she, he goes, <gasps> I know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the enemy. I know it's kind of so evil. It's kind of the uh, <laughs> Tony Stark Industries of today Yikes. is uh, lucky, mm, but that's funny. yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go with she was one of the good ones. <laughs> she was the only woman in the room. Truly, <laughs> truly, trail blue. She was in the room where it happened. Yes, she was Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Do you ladies have any questions for Katie? 
She's she's getting her research papers ready <laughs> for reference. No, I like. She's gonna I fan s- them all out. Ask me a question. I stacked my papers like I was just done. I, I know, got, right? I got a closing no, here. Like, wait a second. How do done. I wrap this thing up? <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Well, that wraps it up for us this week. We are off next week, but join us November 29th for the last episode of the season. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) As our next gal pal shares her cool thing as gal's guide podcast <laughs> continues thank you for listening it's always too many gals i know i <laughs> we need for a show notes we'll, we'll fix it next season we'll fix it next season this week's show <laughs> visit galsguide.org want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers become a gals guide patron today thanks for listening <laughs>